everyone and um, welcome to another instalment of uh, my vinyl collection. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologise um, for being really tardy with these videos. I'd always intended to do one a week sort of thing or two a week, but as you'll all be aware, over the last four weeks we've all been stuck in the house and my whole life has became a video conference and laptop and video conference. So I've just not been able to bring myself to make one of these. When my working day is finished at home, I really just um, turn off the laptop at the moment. But in saying that, it's time to get going. Um, so first of all, you may be wondering, why is he wearing my hat in the house? And that's because, yeah, again, not been at the barber in weeks, um, so under here is a bit of a mess. So I am wearing the hat, and I can't wait till the lockdown's over, and I can get across the road to my barber. So that'll be um, that'll be a really good thing for me. It has to be said. So without further ado, it's just a mixture of the albums today. Um, there's no really a theme, um, although they kind of fit together in uh, some ways. So first off um, is this album. Um, it's um, Whiskey Myers Mud. I'm going to take it out of the plastic sleeve because um, it's quite a glare. I've got a lot of windows in my living room. So Whiskey Myers Mud, um, which is their fourth album in 2016. Um, it's on the Wiggy Thump label and Spine Farm. Um, I really like this album. I have mentioned the band before. Um, they're a southern rock band. Country Dirt Road Band, Red Dirt, I think, do they call it, maybe? Um, it made it to number four in the US country charts. Um, it's a rocking album, though, I have to say. I um, I really like it. This one is a limited edition one, I believe. Um, so it comes with uh, printed dinner with them all looking suitably um, mountain redneck there. It's on orange vinyl. Woohoo! with a printed dinner label there and it also comes with a poster and here we are this is the poster of the band um, there we are, yeah, nice big poster um, to go with it now it says limited edition i'm never sure if something's limited edition unless it's got a number on it to be honest there's so many of these albums out there that just say limited edition. How do I know it's limited edition? It's no limited edition unless it's like one of five thousand, one of three thousand. That's kind of the way I look at it. There could be tens of 20, 30, 40,000 of these orange vinyls kicking about. Still, it is very nice. Um, so, um, it is a good album. One of the songs on here, um, Frogman, um, was written with uh, Rich Robinson of the Black Crows. Um, and it's a song about the US Navy SEALs, but I would suggest the best songs on here, On the River, um, Mud is a, itself is a brilliant song. Um, and it, yeah, yeah, it's a really, really good album. So if you haven't came across these boys, check them out. Um, I've been to see them live a few times um, and they are really good, They're really good indeed. So that is Whiskey Myers and their Mud album. The next one up is a bit older, and this is from 1988, and this is um, Steve Earle's Copperhead Road album. Um, this one came out on MCA on the Rainbow um, labels, uh, there we are there. And um, this is Steve Earle's third album. I was lucky enough to see him on this tour, and it was a fantastic gig, I have to say. Um, this is Steve Earle's first rock record. Um, it blends bluegrass with rock music. Um, he called it metal, but I would call it rock. Um, and it's the first time it was ever really done. It's um, something a bit special, this album, it has to be said. Um, Really, really worth um, a look at. Side one reflects Steve Earle's politics. Um, Copperhead Road is a reference to um, the war on drugs that America was fighting at the time, and you know, it really wasn't working. Um, Snake Oil um, is a dig at the US president of that time, which was Ronald Reagan. Um, and interestingly, both Copperhead Road and the song Johnny Come Lately. Um, are performed with the Pogues, um, and it's about returning veterans, um, those songs. And the last song on side one, Backs to the Wall, is about poverty and homelessness in America. Um, 
So, yeah, um, it's a fabulous album. Um, Copperhead Road itself, um, as you can see here, was an actual road um, near Mountain City in Tennessee, but it's, they've had to rename it because everybody kept stealing the road signs, so it's no longer Copperhead Road. It's not there anymore. Um, side one of this album, as I say, is absolutely brilliant. Um, Copperhead Road itself, Snake Oil, Backs to the Wall, The Devil's Right Hand, Johnny Come Lately, absolutely fantastic. Side two, I wouldn't even listen to it. Side two of this is just rubbish. It's, uh, they're, they're sort of, well, it's one, two, three, four love songs that even in terms of Steve Earle are poorly written and aren't very good. He's capable of so much better than this. And the last song is some sort of hokey Christmas song um, called Nothing But A Child. And when I bought this in 1980, I thought, oh, a Christmas song, I could play this every Christmas. And I've never played it again, because even the Christmas song is absolutely nonsense. Um, so, yes, the first side of this album, absolutely stunning, very unique. It hadn't been done before, that blendy rock music and bluegrass. Unfortunately, side B of this album just completely lets it down. And I really, really like Steve Earle. I really love his stuff. I don't know where he came up with the five songs on side two of this, because it's probably the poorest stuff he's ever did. Um, but yeah, that's a shame. But still, they were great on tour. I still love this album. So Steve Earle there with Copperhead Road. It came um, with a um, lyric in her and um, picture and a wee, um, a wee message, I think, somewhere on the other side of it is. Um, so yeah, um, Steve Earle there in Copperhead Road. The next one I want to show is um, completely different because this is a, um, this is a punk album. Um, and this is The Clash's debut album. Now, this is different though. Um, this the Clash's debut album was 1977 in the UK. This is a US Santa Maria pressing, and this is the debut album released in 79 in the US. So there's quite a lot of differences. Although the cover looks the same at first glance, there's quite a lot of differences with this album. Um, it is on Epic. There we are there. It's on the Epic label. And it only cost um, £4,000 when this was made, and it took three weeks to do. Um, the last song inside to Garage Land um, was a response to um, a really bad review they got. I heard it said that the Clash are the kind of garage band who should be returned to the garage immediately, preferably with the engine still running. Um, so it did not go down well with some people. This version, on this version, um, Deny, Cheat, uh, Protex Blue, 48, uh, it's 48 are missing. White Riot is not the original version, it's the re-recorded version. And added to this were Clash City Rockers, White Man and, Man and Hammersmith Pally, I Fought the Law, and Jail Guitar Doors. Um, and of course, the White Riot was the re-recorded one. Um, also on here are um, credited are both drummers. Um, so um, Terry Chimes and um, Topper Hedden are uh, both credited on there. So yeah, a wee bit different, very different from the UK original. This plays me like a wee bit of greatest hits than anything else, I suppose. Um, but still, cracking wee album, cracking wee album. Um, next and last up, because I'm doing quite a short, um, I'm doing quite a short one there, a wee video this time, um, before I end up in a complete ramble. The last one to show you is a favourite of mine, um, and again, is an American pressing, and this is Thin Lizzy's Bad Reputation, 1977. We'll just take out the plastic sleeve here for the shine. Um, and this is their eighth album. It's a US Pitman pressing on Mercury um, with the Tower label. Uh, and there we are with the towers on there. And what's unusual about this album, I suppose, is if you look at the front cover, there's only three of the band on it, but there were four. Um, so you've got uh, Downey, you've got Scott Gorham, and you've got Phil Linnett on it. And missing is Brian Robertson. 
However, on the back cover, you'll see Brian Robertson is on there. And also on the inner, on the front, there's only the three of them. But on the back, Brian Robertson is included uh, down in the corner there, that corner, there we are. Now, the reason for that was that he'd been booted out of the band, basically. Um, Brian Robertson's from Glasgow. He's a was a cracking, cracking guitarist. Um, however, he only he's only credited with three tracks on this album, and that's because um, on the tour before, when they were really beginning to get big, and um, it was a really important US tour for them. The night before he was due to fly to America for that tour, Robertson went out um, on the lash to um, London Speakeasy where he met Frankie Miller and him and Frankie Miller got absolutely blittered and Miller got into a fight and some guy from another band, the guitarist, uh, smashed a ball and tried to glass Frankie Miller and um, Robertson put his hand up to stop the ball and it severed all the nerves and tendons in his hand. So he had to miss that tour. Phil Linnett was absolutely raging because he thought we'd put the band in jeopardy. Um, and it also meant putting Gary Moore back into the tour. So Gary Moore played guitar on that tour, um, but was not on the subsequent album, this one. And Scott Gorham actually, um, against Phil Linnett's wishes, flew Robertson out to Toronto um, because he needed them to play on the dual guitar parts on this album. So that's really why he's um, credited with three. Um, so yeah, we lad from Glasgow goes absolutely mental and gets his cell out of their fight. Who would have thought it? Um, I think this album will come back. I'm going to do a, a vlog at some point about um, 10 US links to uh, Scotland and bands and why you can claim bands are actually Scottish. And of course, this would be one of them because Brian Robertson was in it. Um, so, yeah, it's a very short video this time. It's to get myself back into the swing of it, I suppose. Um, yeah, trying times for all of us, I think. I hope you are all safe and well. Um, if you've enjoyed this and you've enjoyed my previous ones, um, please uh, subscribe. That's the first time I've said that. It's something I always forget. So if you like it, give me a like. Please subscribe. Any comments you've got are always more than welcome. And again, to any, any of uh, my followers watching, I'm sorry if I've not been watching and leaving comments on your videos recently. I am just... Um, yeah, just out of it with uh, technology at the moment. It's what I'm doing during the day, and by the evening I've had enough. So take care, everyone. I hope really this time I'll have another uh, video out to you. Um, I'm hoping by next Saturday. So stay safe. Cheers.